This was unusual. This sort of came in with a couple of other bits. So it's like I didn't buy it individually, it just came with the bundle. It's like I've never sold before. Welcome back Daxters, welcome back to the channel. My name's George, this is Retro Reselling. Uh, sorry it's been a quiet week for me this week. Not a lot going on at all really. You know, Saturday morning now. I've got another contact with my hi-fi guy, another bundle of stuff, so I thought I'd bring you with me on the road again, pick up a load of nice high quality stuff, and uh, then we've got to go back to the unit. Got a couple of orders going out. Uh, I've got a drop off for parcel force. I've got about three or four parcel force uh, packages to get out by half 12 today. That's when they shut. Luckily, I've got the champs of depot. I don't have to worry about dropping them off at a post office and then moaning because the parcels are too big or anything. Literally got a national depot like five, 10 minute drive from me. So no matter how big or heavy they are, up to 30 kilograms, I think. Yeah, drop them off and off they go. So as I haven't filmed anything or done a live, I thought, yeah, I thought I'd bring you with me again. See what Hi-Fi guy has got for me. Even though I know what he's got for me, I thought I'd show you. And the importance of making contacts, uh, especially if you've got a trusted source like I have. I've got a couple, as soon as they message, especially now when stock's very hard to come by, making the most of it. As soon as he's got some good stuff, as long as it's worth the journey, obviously I can make this journey. It is for my business and things before, you know, the Karens get on the comment section. <laughs> yeah, good high-end quality stuff. He said it's all tested and working and because he's trusted, Whenever he says it is working, it's always working, which is handy. So I can pay up a little bit, get good quality stuff in that's quickly to move because quality always sells. I could be buying a load of cheap stuff and just because it's cheap doesn't mean it does sell. Like especially with the clothing that I'm doing at the moment, even things like 10, 12 pounds, they'll sort of more longer tail and they won't fly off the shelf. As you know, if you've been following this channel through boots out season, I'm picking up stuff for higher end prices and they still move. They move within the first month or two maybe three months, like three months is like a longer time for me usually. Really happy he's been messaging me, getting some good stuff in. Let's see what he has got. So let's get on the road. Let's go. Ooh, radio. So I just need to get my money out and it always saddens me. Whenever I get money out of my cash point, that gives fivers. That's why I get this one. Nice five pound notes, especially for the boot sales. Fairly hospice, I always do well there, especially with like footwear and clothing. It's been shut since, since when's it been shut? I think it hasn't been open this year. It's a sad thing. Hopefully it'll be open soon though. Fingers crossed. There we go. So while we're driving there, hands free of course, nice and safe. Take the exit now. Take the exit now. Yeah, I thought we'd have a little chat about how this year and last year has sort of affected me and going forward in, in my business. Of mile, keep right. Let's keep her quiet for a minute. Yeah, so obviously stock isn't coming as easily as it used to be. Obviously during the winter, I used to slow down a bit anyway, but at least I could go to different towns, doing different charity shops, like a year, was it a year ago? I've done my charity shop championship. Yeah, I was free to go wherever I wanted. Literally every day I went to a different town, scoured their charity shops, got a nice bag full of stuff. Keep me ticking over until boot sales open uh, and probably this year and last year's taught me i maybe rely on boot sales far too much i'll say as soon as they've stopped boom i suddenly stagger my shop goes down harder to get good quality stuff so yeah it's forced me to look at other avenues so as you know the wholesale vintage clothing trying to take depop more seriously which i have been doing and it has been paying off made a couple of sales this week which is obviously not enough. Hang on. Merging, merge, merge. Yep, get behind me, son. Get behind me. So yeah, I've been looking at more wholesale type things. Obviously not wholesale, new items, still sticking with the vintage used items. And normally clothing, I get pretty bored of clothing quite quickly, especially at charity shops. But um, yeah, so far enjoying it. Uh, getting the pre-loved vintage stuff like boxes of bundles of things uh, most of it's been good quality stuff it was its ups and downs though as we know obviously you can get a box full of things that are grade b got damage or holes in you've got to send it back touch wood i haven't had that yet uh, got another box another 10 kilogram box coming from pre-loved kilo so look out for that video i think that's been delivered today actually i had a delivery from another vintage wholesaler yesterday a smaller one 
yeah clothing isn't my true passion really it's cool but yeah I soon get bored of it this is what I want I actually got my hi-fi guys number something I should have done like two years ago when I first sort of started buying from him uh, but yeah finally done that so when he does get stuff I can obviously go there obviously not just for one thing when he's got a nice collection of things made a journey so limiting the journeys limiting petrol and things like that my time he gets money i get money get good quality stuff it's tested and working and it flies off the shelf i think the last haul i got from him video here but up here that's all sold and that sold again within two months i think it all sold out so that's exactly why i don't mind paying up because it's getting strong returns and it sells fast but then in the current climate it doesn't suit the long-term goals it sells quickly i get the money in but i'm not getting the replacement like keeping the stock rotating so that's what's catching me out so hopefully when boot sales do open uh, don't rely on them as heavily as i used to um, and when they are open stock up get a nice backlog going i never used to like having a backlog it stresses me out fills my mind with clutter like i just need to get through it all Was he? When I'm back to being full full time properly, when I'm at the unit like nine till five when the girls are at school and things again, uh, I can obviously work through a lot more stuff. So here yeah, when it's peak season, I'm thinking I get far too much for my unit. It's starting to backlog a bit. Don't be afraid of that. Just keep plowing on because yeah, the winter months are long, especially in a lockdown, which hopefully shouldn't happen again. Ooh, sun's coming out. Get the shades on. But the advantage of this lockdown and all these scenarios going on or that have been happening is I have been on Depop for two or three years now and I have been doing like online arbitrage I've done a bit of everything before so I've learned the different niches different markets and things so that's played to my advantage so this situation has happened and I've been able to sort of adapt like a reselling chameleon I think I've said it before early on in the channel got to be like a chameleon adapt to your surroundings so during the boot sale season obviously i'm at boot sales i don't have to worry as much about charity shops auctions things like that then in the winter got to adapt to my colors adapt to the scenario so then i've got to start getting clothing like wholesale vintage items i've got to start doing charity shops uh, making contacts so it's all about adapting and yeah in the past where i've been dabbling here there and everywhere it's paid to my advantage so yeah fumbling my way through this lockdown which is hopefully going to an end soon and then in the long term so say in that five years time if i'm still doing this i should be still doing this hopefully i've learned from this adapted made different contacts learned different marketplaces different wholesalers and hopefully i should just get stronger and grow on from this so yeah short term it's rubbish long term hopefully has a positive effect right we're about 15 minute drive away so I'll get in there, pay the man his money, and we'll get back to the unit, and I'll show you what goodies I got. So, I'll see you shortly. park up right engine off let's take them off for a minute face covering on bosh right nice quick handover and then gotta try and get to parcel force before it shuts at half 12 which is in an hour so yeah quite a lot to do let's crack on Right, deal done. Very happy with what I've got. And then split that off. Yeah, that's the favorite. Oh, it's a beauty. And blooming heavy as well. Having a reliable source of good quality stuff is priceless. Ooh. 
Yeah, I did say, I think a week or so ago, I teased a mega haul possibly coming, sort of retro gaming, shoes, designer clothing. That looks like it's fallen through. Um, yeah, that's why I wasn't too sure. It's looking a bit iffy, but that looks like it's fallen through. But yeah, that's why having a reliable source is worth its weight in gold uh, or worth its weight in tat anyway, good quality tat. Get your good, strong sources, reliable. They know they're making a bit of money. You're making a bit of money. There's that neutral respect there. Yeah, you've got to think about the long term, like I've said a couple of times now. Uh, short term, quick buck, and then it's gone, and then that bridge is gone. You, yeah, build bridges, and then going into this, if you're in this in the long haul like I am, I'm in this game till I retire, pretty much, unless something changes. Yeah, just need to hook up with my shoes and boots, man, which as soon as I see him, I'm gonna get his number. So during the winter seasons and things, I can still get good quality shoes and boots um, for a good price. Again, he makes money, I make money. Flipping stuff, getting good quality merchandise. Yeah, that's what it's all about. So as soon as I can, I'll get his number. Engine on, let's get back to the unit and show you what I did get. Yeah. Right, let's turn that on. And here we are, we're back. Nice table fall. This is exactly what I want my eBay store to be filled with. Nice vintage high-end electronics, all working, worth good, good money. Uh, yeah, quickly take you through, because I'm tight for time, show you what I got, and then what I paid, what I'm hoping to list it for. Obviously this is a approximate listing type value, so don't take it as bang, that's what I'm gonna get. This is roughly what I'm gonna list it for and then sort of up and down from there, really. Let's flip you around, show you what I got. So we'll start from this end. Uh, we have got a bag full of um, wires, remote controls, and this subwoofer, uh, Boston subwoofer. I haven't actually had this brand before, but nice and big, looks solid and uh, well-made. The surround sound type speakers are in here. I think there's about four in there. I did look these up briefly before I filmed. Uh, should be looking at sort of 120, 150, depending on how many little speakers I got. If I got about four, that's a good set. So yeah, 150 pounds right off the bat there. Really nice, cute pair of like small speakers. Eagle products, nice teak casing, proper vintage, really nice things. Made in Japan, really sweet, really small. Probably like, what's that? Probably 12 inches tall which is small for speakers. This is probably estimating, I'm gonna probably list these at like 50, 60 pounds. Really nice, really good condition. Yeah, should fly out. Oh, fly out, eagle. Uh, a bit more of a modern item, Onkyo, I think that's how you say it, AV receiver. Had these loads of times, really nice solid sellers. This is another sort of three figure sale here. Should be 110, 125 maybe I'll list this at. And this one has HDMI as well, which is gonna make it worth a bit more maybe, maybe more 150 actually. Receivers that don't have HDMI, they tend to fetch, yeah, sort of in the 80s, sort of not quite 100. So obviously you want, you want that HD uh, cable to hook up to more modern things, uh, which this one's got. So yeah, probably more, yeah, near 150, which is nice. Pioneer Amplifier, SA550 Mark II. Looked this up again yesterday, sent me pictures. Again, this should be a nice £100 sale, sort of maybe lower end, 85 95 Conditions on its side, this needs a bit of a wipe over, and yeah, a nice easy sale again. This was unusual, this sort of came in with a couple of other bits. So, it's like I didn't buy it individually, just came with the bundle. It's like I've never sold before. We've got a sort of trumpet, saxophone. Not saxophone, trumpet. No idea, it looks like it's got a bit of corrosion, a bit of wear, but this came with the bundle, so I would have got this on its own. Don't know what the brand is, no, nothing about this stuff, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Price wise, no idea, but I think this was basically thrown in, so I'm gonna say this owes me nothing. It's got this case, yeah, stick around, and see what it does sell for if it does sell at all. I don't know. <laughs> Then this is the big daddy. This is the main one. This is my favorite. He sent me pictures of this and I just had to have it. Ooh, see if I don't break it. But these are actually speakers. As you can see, they come away from the main unit, which I'm struggling to do. I'm showing you to do this one handed, but they seem to flop forward. So yeah, Sony, 
vintage, good quality, nice and heavy. Got a reel to reel player. Look at that beauty. Absolutely awesome. The only thing you did say that he was missing is a, a knob here just to get fast forward in, uh, playing, etc. But yeah, still works, just needs a missing knob, which I might be able to source. But if not, still working, still an awesome item, my favourite by far. Price wise, I was probably looking at 295 and then accept offers. No rush to sell this really, unless I have another slow week, which I've been having recently. If on a quick sale, I might aim sort of lower 200s or higher 100, so 185, 195. But I'm probably going to start at 295. Best offers on, see how it goes, judge the uh, temperature of the audience or the buyers. If it gets a lot of watches and things at 295, if I get a couple of um, offers, that'd be nice. If I don't get any bites or any offers after a couple of weeks, then I'll reduce it maybe 250. Uh, but yeah, no problems at all there. Just the missing knob, which I'll hopefully replace, but if not, it still works. So for all this lot on the table, I paid £280. Again, 20 minutes down the road, trusted source, um, continuous getting me things sort of once a month I maybe taking a trip up there get a nice table full of good stuff like this so yeah don't mind paying up a bit but hopefully returning this is listings obviously before fees before taking offers before anything like that uh 700 pound in listings without even including this trumpet thing didn't even include that and the rest should be about 700 pound in listings so yeah more than doubling up i never got fees and things so yeah and it should be flying out as well yeah really happy it's 20 past 12 now so i think i've missed parcel four because it takes about 50 minutes to drive there but it's fine they'll be on time no bother so now i'm not going to parcel four so i've got two orders going out today two 50 pound orders and we will have this one first first sale is this goes from one of my first hauls uh when was this Back in October, I think, just before lockdown two started. Uh, got a, from a subscriber, a nice haul of stuff. Got two of these Virgin travel agent type posters from the shops, like nice red Virgin type color. And we've got these on the back as well, showing what they are. Rather superior transatlantic travel, Virgin Atlantic. Yeah, really like these. Um, had a New York one as well uh, that sold a couple of months ago. And the same buyer came back for this this morning, offered me 50, accepted that, it's got a matching pair, bought both of them now. Obviously, got to take extra care, it's going to be a bit of a pain to pack. Got to really make sure this gets there safely. Yeah, really nice sale, owes me about £10 I think in the deal, £10-12ish, pound. so good markup. A couple of months to sell, but yeah, the pair are staying together to the same buyer, which is cool. And second one, we have... Chelmsford Football Club football shirt. So bear with me while I get this out. That's quicker than I thought and a lot easier. Uh, yeah, we've got this Chelmsford City sort of vintage football club shirt. Yeah, who knew Chelmsford had a football club, eh? Um, I didn't know until I moved here, actually. But we've got number nine. Um, so the story behind these, I've covered them a couple of times now, but basically Facebook Marketplace, uh, Kit Guy was just clearing out their old stock, basically. So this is all team used as well used by Chelmsford City players back in the day and things. I've got loads of stuff. I think I paid £150 for everything. Uh, I'm way into profit already. Um, this shirt alone, I've got about four or five of them. And this one on its own, they wanted number nine, has gone for £49.99 plus postage. The four or five shirts of this I have got, it's on one listing and then I've done a sort of selection of what number they want. So number nine, number eight, number seven select what number you want and then check out. And that's what this buyer's done. And this one is actually going to the Netherlands, which is really surprising. Small team at Chelmsford City, which is a proper football club. It's in the lower leagues. Um, it's going to Netherlands. So really interesting. I don't know if they were a Chelmsford supporter, if they lived here, moved away. Um, yeah, to pay 50 pounds for a vintage Chelmsford City one and to choose number nine as well. Did they used to wear it? Did they used to play in it? Did they used to live here? No idea. Plus I say, even if you find smaller team football shirts, normally the smaller the better. So like this, we're in the smaller leagues, but we're going to have a cult following, like a strong following. Um, harder to get the kits, of course. Um, and like teams like obviously Arsenal, Manu, things, they're worth good money, but they print millions of them, to be honest, every year. 
uh, so not hard to find but more buyers potentially this will sit for a while uh, i've sold a handful now and i've more than tripled my money already i've still got a box full so that was an awesome deal yeah just really unusual to be going to the netherlands which is cool Actually, before I wrap up this uh, video, I've been trialing some sort of eco-friendly packaging suppliers like you know, and I've found a new one, uh, which I'll be linking down below, but I thought I'd quickly show you it. This is what I've been using for a few months now. Uh, these are made from like sugarcane, carbon neutral and everything. So yeah, that's an upgrade from just bog standard plastic, just gets made, gets thrown away. Not good for the environment really, whereas these are carbon neutral, made from like sugar cane extract or something, sustainably so. So, uh, improvement, but I wanted to go one step further and I found something, and which is affordable as well, very good price. Found these mailing bags, which are 100% compostable. Composter pack, 100% compostable, uh, it meets the regulations, so you can put in your green waste bin. They do different sizes, like packs of 100 as well, which is handy. And the other good thing is they come with two glue strips as well. So say I send this shirt out, I use my one strip, stick it on like, send it out like I do. And then because there's a second strip, they can then reuse this bag. Or if they need to return it, they can then use the second strip to return it. So saves on more packaging, can use it twice, 100% compostable. Yeah, awesome stuff. Um, been looking for something like this for a while. Obviously saves on the amounts of plastic and poly bags, like regular poly bags. Um, yeah, every little bit helps. So yeah, if you are interested, um, I'll put a link down below. Um, there's all different sizes and things and I've tested them out. A couple of subscribers have bought from me this week and they got there safely. So thanks to them subscribers for letting me know how they got there. So just another little thing to help reduce plastic waste and things. So yeah that's me done for this video now uh, hopefully you enjoyed that nice saturday morning i'm gonna get home for some lunch now hope you're all doing well hope sales are trickling in i had a better week this week i think i hit four figures finally this week for the first time in a while so that was very welcomed and now i've got this table full of stuff which should keep that momentum going into spring hopefully when things start opening up again we'll find out on monday i think fingers crossed thanks for watching if you are new to this channel and you enjoyed this sort of thing uh, yeah Hope you consider hitting that subscribe button, uh, hit the bell as well so you know when I go live or when I upload new videos, hitting that bell lets you know straight away, like gets you notified. And if you are subscribed already and you want extras behind the scenes and things like that, uh, yeah, consider joining for the memberships. Uh, that's been going really well. We're up to 20 memberships now, which is awesome. So thanks to everyone that has joined for that. Uh, really appreciate it. Having lots of fun doing a few different things here and there I don't usually do on the channel. Uh, yeah. Really appreciate the support. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.